Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. So, I just filmed this makeup look, and the plan was just to, you know, go about my day, eat dinner, chill, relax, and then take off my makeup and go to bed. But you see, I just, I can't do that quite yet because I'm so mesmerized by myself right now. I'm so in love with this eye look that I just can't part ways with it yet. And I was like, you know what? It needs to be featured again in another video. So I thought right before I went to bed, I'd film another video for you guys. So here we are. So in tonight's video, because it is in fact dark out, I thought I would take some inspiration from my favorite YouTuber, Samantha Ravindahl. I love her so much. I feel like we have very similar senses of humor. I don't laugh out loud very often when I'm watching TV shows, YouTube videos, or movies, but I laugh out loud with every single video of hers that I watch. She's amazing. So she posted a video all about makeup products that she would never get rid of or declutter, and I just thought it was a really fun twist to the whole decluttering of makeup that we see quite often on YouTube, so I thought I'd give it a go. So these makeup products, for one reason or the other, have something special to them. It's not just going to be, oh, these are my holy grail, so I'm never going to get rid of them because makeup, unfortunately, does expire. So even with my holy grails, if I don't use them up by the time that happens, I will have to declutter them. These are products I will never declutter. Here we go. Just holding this in my hand makes me feel so nostalgic. <laughs> This is the Tarte Make Believe in Yourself Eye and Cheek Palette. And with this palette, I created my first ever YouTube video. So I can never part ways with this. This brings back so many memories. This is actually an amazing eyeshadow palette. The shimmers are so foiled and beautiful. When I was starting my channel, I thought to myself, what type of video would people click on? What would people want to see? And I know that new review videos are always very popular. And this palette had just launched at the time, so I made a review video all about it. It's private privatized? Private? It's private. <laughs> on my channel because it's really embarrassing. I thought I was a natural. <laughs> it was not, I was not quite there yet. And I'm sure in a year from now, I'm gonna be cringing so hard at me now. But you know what, it's all about the journey, so it's all good. I remember sitting in front of my giant window for natural lighting, because of course I didn't have any equipment that I have now. I'm still using the same tripod Alex's dad gave me one to use, and I used Alex's iPhone 5S to film that first video, and I was so proud of it. Alex's whole family put me on their big TV screen and watched it over like three times. They're so supportive. And the video is definitely awkward to watch, but you could definitely tell it's me with my quirky self thrown in dumb jokes here and there. So I can never get rid of this just for memory's sake. Then I have these two eyeshadow palettes by Anastasia Beverly Hills. There's something about Anastasia as a brand that is so addictive to me like I'm so obsessed with their formulas their packaging their vibe there's just something about it that I just want to collect everything from their brand I have most of the products from their brand so this is the master palette by Mario such a good palette I just feel like Kim Kardashian every time I pick up this palette I just love the rich tones in here and you get such glamorous beautiful looks like iconic looks very minimal and everyday or super sultry and smoky I like I said, I literally feel like Kim Kardashian every time I pick this up. And then this is the Prism palette. I'm obsessed with this packaging, black and gold. Mmm, that is some good stuff. Honestly, Anastasia just kills it with her color schemes. They're so unique. I never see a brand other than Anastasia coming out with color stories like these. Actually, Juvia's Place. Juvia's Place is really good at that as well. But I just can't ever part ways with these colors. Heck no. And by the way, a lot of these items are limited edition, which plays a big factor into why I'm never getting rid of these. I am an extreme hoarder when it comes to limited edition items. And then this is the Marc Jacobs Night Owl palette. This was actually my first luxury eyeshadow purchase, and I got it at Marshall's. 
Girl, you have no idea how excited I was when I saw this there. And then I found out that they were discontinuing these palettes, which is probably why it was there, but I don't care. These colors truly look like full-on jewels on the eyes. There's something about this color story that is so inspiring and sexy. I'm never getting rid of this. And I think I honestly might prefer this one to their new, like, green palette that they came out with but I'm probably still gonna purchase that at some point. And then this is their Fantasine palette. I just couldn't pass up the white and rose gold packaging and I love the tones in here. They're so girly and romantic. The formula of Marc Jacobs eyeshadows are truly outstanding. I feel so glamorous whenever I'm applying them. And then for some more affordable options, these are both ColourPop palettes. Excuse my voice, by the way. <clears throat> it's very raspy happens when I film for many hours in the day. Both the Dream Street and Perception palette are limited edition and it sucks because I truly think these are the best ColourPop eyeshadows that they sell as well as the Yes Please palette. First of all, I love Kathleen Lights with all my heart. She's one of my top like three favorite YouTubers. She's actually the first beauty YouTuber I ever started watching and she's literally the reason as well as my sister as to why I got so roped into the whole beauty community. So I had to support my girl with this collab and I love the tones in here. This is literally the palette that everyone has been begging for, you know, wanting something easy to use for every day but also inspiring with pops of color because I feel like people are getting bored very quickly with what is being released on the market and this has pretty much anything you can ask for. It's so affordable. The formula is outstanding so I'm never gonna get rid of these two and then I literally bought the entire collection of the NYX glitters every single color because I just knew they were gonna come in handy for tutorials and loose glitter like this doesn't expire so I'm never gonna get rid of these I'm never gonna go through a full like jar of these there's so much product in here so if I ever need to reach for a glitter these are so affordable and really good literally gonna last me a lifetime that's pretty sad to think about. A glitter is going to outlive me. <laughs> and then I have a crap load of highlighters I'm not getting rid of. I'm a highlighting fiend. So here we go. So this is the Persona Cali Glow Highlighter in the shade Zuma. And the reason I'm never going to get rid of this is because this was my first makeup PR. Like I can't tell you guys how freaking exciting that is. Like I'm lost for words and I'm so appreciative of Persona for thinking I'm deserving or worth it that she and her team would invest their time to send me one of their products for free. Like, oh, it's so crazy. Now I am never getting rid of this solely because of packaging alone. This is by far the most beautiful makeup component I have ever seen. Like how incredible is this? This is the Smashbox and Vlada Petal Metal Highlighter. This is in the shade Gilded Rose. Even the powder inside is shaped like a rose. If you're someone who likes to really decorate your makeup vanity, you need to buy this. It's still available. And I actually love the product inside. It's interesting because it's like very subtle and natural but it's kind of not at the same time. It truly is a sheen. It has a very unique shade to it. It's like a peachy gold with a tiny bit of a pink flip to it. It's absolutely stunning. It doesn't have a color cast whatsoever. And it's funny because it claims that it has like a gel formula and it feels like a powder, but once you apply it to the skin, it literally looks like nothing I've ever seen before. This is never gonna look blinding or metallic, but you will definitely see it if you build it up. When it hits that lighting, it shines. It's stunning. And then I have a whole bunch of other ones, so I'm just gonna quickly run through them because I'm basically not ever gonna declutter these for the same reason. They're all limited edition products that are just way too good to be so. It's truly heartbreaking. This is the Anastasia So Hollywood Illuminator, and as you can see, I haven't used a lot of this just because I want to save it, but I should just 
probably use it anyway because makeup expires. I really don't know why they ever took these away. They were such a big hit. Like, why wouldn't you want to make profit off of that as a company? I don't really get it. Then we have the Anastasia Amorizi highlighter. Truly one of the best highlighters to ever hit the market, in my opinion. This color is just so universally flattering, and it just looks like a wet sheen on the cheekbones, and it never, ever looks powdery. This is one of my go-tos that I always reach for when it's like an important day or an important night and you just can't afford to fool around with highlight. It needs to be the best. Then we have the Dose of Colors Katie and Desi collab. This is the highlighter in the shade Fuego. Why did they take this away? This is the perfect gold shade. The undertone is so stunning and it looks so blinding and wet on the cheeks. Then we have the Hourglass Metallic Strobe Lighting Palette. First of all, this is way too expensive for me to get rid of. Absolutely no, sir. These are so blinding, so finely milled, never look powdery on the skin, literally just gives you a angelic sheen. And then last glow product, we have my four Anastasia glow kits. It's really annoying to me that they come out with these and then they're discontinued and then they come out with a new one. It's discontinued. Come out with a new one. It's discontinued. So I have the Nicole Guerrero That Glow Kit Sugar and Sun Dipped. I'm just obsessed with Anastasia highlights as you can clearly tell. And then for bronzer, this is the Alexis Ren and ColourPop Topaz Duo. This is one of the prettiest bronzers I've ever come across. I bought this because of Jaclyn Hill raving about it non-stop. This will give you the most stunning, warm, beachy, model bronze skin effect. I cannot get enough of it. And the ColourPop bronzers are one of my all-time favorite formulas. The highlight is a bit confusing to me though because it's like way too dark. These don't mesh real well together in my opinion because if this is a good bronzer shade for you this is going to be too dark and if this works for you this bronzer is going to be way too light on you so I don't really understand this unless you mix the two products like if you want a really glowy bronzer effect but that's just a little bit too much for me and then another Marc Jacobs product this is their Tantastic Bronzer I was so mad <laughs> that I did not pick this up the first round and I thought these were truly discontinued. I searched everywhere for them. Even on all of those selling apps, these were just sold out everywhere. You could not grab them and I was so disappointed because everyone literally raved about this product and thank goodness Marc Jacobs listened because this is now a permanent bronzer but this specific packaging is limited edition the white with the rose gold soon this will just be in their black packaging with the silver like their other bronzers so a packaging is always a killer gets me every time and two this is truly one of the best bronzers I've ever used this is such a beautiful tone and shade it's not too warm it's not too cool it never gets packed or muddy. It never can be built up to look like too much. I feel like this is the color your skin turns when it's naturally bronze. There's something about this formula that is just impeccable. It blends perfectly. The only thing I would change about it is make it a little bit more pigmented. That's just my preference though, but that's what makes it so user-friendly because it is that's such an easy pigmentation to work at. It's not like it's not pigmented, but I definitely have bronzers that are more so. And then last products are my Pat McGrath Matte Trans Lipsticks. This is just an experience in itself. Honestly, when you open up these lipsticks, every single shade has their own component and like carton that they come in which is so cool and the designs are so intricate and stunning I can't get enough so you open it like so the packaging is so bougie and classy simple but elegant and just different I'm obsessed and again black and gold you know and then you twist up the product in all of its glory. So packaging just kills me. I have yet to try these. It's really sad. I'm still waiting for my fourth lipstick to come in. That was a whole debacle and mess. If you're interested, you can watch my really long makeup haul and I talk about it all in there. But apparently these are the best matte lipsticks in the world and these were just way too expensive. I mean, not really for me because I had a discount, but they're worth a lot and I just have a really hard time parting with luxury makeup items. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't we all? So that is all for me today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. 
If and only if you would like to see me in more videos, I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.